A final talk on the InnoVision uh, session. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Dave Garrett. Dr. Dave Garrett is a Cynthian Corp's uh, chief architect and has worked on three generations of Cynthian's neural designer processes, NDPs. He's an IEEE fellow, holds 100 plus granted US patents, and previously was general chair of the International Symposium on Low Power Electronics and Design. Prior to that, he had a distinguished career at Broadcom, Bell Labs, and is a B-SIEM, is that how you pronounce it? B-SIEM. B-SIEM Communications. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Okay, I'm standing between you and lunch, so I'm gonna try and make up a little bit of time, but bear with me, we're gonna play some video games by the end of this. Um, you may think of Sentient from the early tiny ML meetups. Many years ago, you go to the Bay Area for who's interested in tiny ML, and 100 people would show up. You think of us as the audio company, but we're doing machine learning so devices can see, hear, and feel. So we don't care what the sensor is. We're providing solutions for all of those types of modalities. So you look at Sentient as a company, it's interesting to see TinyML organized into hardware and software and data tracks. What we do in Sentient is put all of that under one house, and the idea is to have the neural compute, the best silicon that we can sell, put the machine learning teams with training and data all in one spot. The idea is what customers look for is outcomes, solutions, and it's very hard to do one of these optimally, let alone come to a customer and get that delivered. So what we do is put all of them in one house, see, hear, feel, put machine learning into the, you know, the consumer's hands. So what we're announcing today, the NTP 200, this is our neural decision processor for image, voice, and sensor processing. So the idea behind this device, again, is our custom Sentient Core 2. It's our neural decision processor, and this is where we're able to execute natively neural networks on the core. But what we're doing with this device is we're adding the periphery to make it a useful system, and on the top left corner, you can see we have our standard audio interfaces, but we've also baked in um, the image interface. So we can directly talk through the DVP interface and actually pull in images directly into our neural core and provide inference directly on those. We have the peripheral controllers, I2C controller and target, SPI controller and target, so we can boot from flash, we can talk to just about any sensor, any PHY control, and pull in you know, the control plane and the data for image in this device. And of course, we have a HiFi 3 DSP on board, so we can actually provide uh, you know, ISP functionality, and we can manage really interesting things from our neural core. Um, like you can see here, here's a picture of a QQVGA image captured you know, directly image sensor, directly in our device without any other components in between. What we're doing is always on image processing, and we can get this in under a milliwatt for the solution. The idea, you know, sil sentient silicon, neural decision processors, what's the difference? We'll break it down into three things. We're doing at memory compute. We make sure that we consume params and activations right where the multipliers are. We sustain a very high MAC utilization, and this is not peak compute, is we sustain very high utilizations over entire networks. And so routinely, even on like things like mobile net that has some depth-wise convolution layers, we can easily get 80% utilization over entire networks on our device. And then finally, the native neural processing. We deal with our training kit. We can go straight from the machine learning frameworks. We execute the graph on the device. And it gives us this dependable training platform. It gives us the ability to understand energy before you actually leave the machine learning team and before it hits the device. So when you're going to quantify that, so we've measured you know, devices taking a look at a version of MobileNet, 128 by 128 MobileNet V1. We can run that on Sentient Core 2. And we ran that and measured that on an ARM A53. So what you see is we really have a 30x advantage on the number of inferences per cycle. So that goes to the efficiency of our data path, how much we're getting done every cycle. But even more important is we see a 100x improvement in energy efficiency for that same use case. And so when you want to do something, if you have a device that can last you know, three and a half days on this ARM A53, we can let our device run that same workload for over a year. So Sometimes you bank that energy. Sometimes what you then do with that is you go build something that can last longer with more powerful networks. And so always decide this, you know, the consumer's end goal. We can do more neural for the same energy budgets as well. MobileNet V1 is pretty interesting. It's you know, a combination of you know, the original CNNs and depth-wise convolutions. And you can see it's a, it's a network that can scale up and scale down. 
So from the original paper on MobileNet, you can see you know, 224 by 224 images. It's almost 570 million max, uh, 4 million parameter types of networks. When you scale that alpha term, you can go up and down into the complexity of the network. And what we're looking with is NDB 200 is not going to be the 4 million parameter, you know, 1,000 person classifier. But you can see very nicely as you scale back into the alpha 0.25, Half a million parameters right on device, 41 million max, that's going to hit our target device. Um, it easily fits on the device. So now the question you have to ask yourself is, well, it looks like the ImageNet accuracy is dropping over time. That's when you go back to the mobile net, you see what you're actually attacking. So what I'll show you the table on the left is, again, from the original paper. Look at the score of um, face declassification. And so the idea behind this is you have the highest level of mobile net, 570 million ads. But as you drop down in complexity and you still have this more limited task, it's actually not dropping in accuracy by all that much. But a, you know, something that we could run on our device and give you this very powerful classification in this milliwatt range. And so look, there's tons of things that you can do with this. You know, now that we have MobileNet V1, we can do depth-wise convolutions, which are actually kind of a tough thing for data access. We do that efficiently. We can do the residual nets like needed for MobileNet V2. All of this are baked into Sentient Core 2. Um, it's pretty interesting. It shows you there's meaningful workloads at this scale. We have our NDB 200 development platform, and so we actually have a joint development working with Pixar, Pixar Imaging, and we've built this platform and it's based on our workhorse, our Raspberry Pi dev boards. And as you can see here, what it pairs up is, you know, Raspberry Pi as the host. On the device, we have the NDP 200 in the center there. We've got the PAG 7920. It's the newest imaging sensor out of PixArt. We've also included their 8x8 thermal imaging sensor. And there's a Bosch uh, uh, accelerometer, six-axis accelerometer gyro sensor on this board. So little secret of pandemic, our Raspberry Pi infrastructure saved our company. And the idea is we have hundreds of these boards logged into the network. The engineers from anywhere in the world can connect in and run meaningful tests and workloads. And you know, having the company shut down and send everybody home, we didn't really miss a beat because of the infrastructure we've been around these dev boards. The great thing is I can ship this to you right away. You can load, uh, capture images, get metadata, see what the sensor looks like. You can train your own network, load it, and get inference right away. On top of that, you, know, you essentially can get feedback to go directly into your platform on top of, you know, take this reference design and go straight into production with your own design. Um, you know, essentially, we've run uh, you know, captures for both computer vision and all kinds of modeling systems. And it's going back to, I want to be able to see and feel and hear in our platforms. With you know, NDP 200 person detection, so this is we've you know, quickly trained up a mobile net V1 on the device, and we use a 320 by 240 grayscale image. And the first thing we do is we add an additional layer that is actually a decimation back down to a smaller image frame, and then we go through the rest of a standard mobile net V1 image. Um, in this case, we're able to use MS Coco data sets. We can transform it to the you know, grayscale, the images sizes that we have. And in four to five hours, we've got a model that's pretty much 90% accuracy on person detection. Um, you know, wide open what you can do with this device. Once you now have this platform, the ability to capture, you can do training, and you can actually close loop, build your system. You know, we're excited to see where this dev platform goes and what people will build with this. So this is the fun part. NDP 200 is more just than object detection. So the question we ask ourselves is, could we actually use this device to observe the environment and act on it? And you know, popular in the machine learning uh, uh, community over the last couple of years is a platform, platform called VizDoom. And what it does is it allows you to develop machine learning around uh, AI, gives you access to the frames of the original Doom game. And so what you'll see is our goal was to take to NDP 200 and teach it to play a video game. So the platform, what we came up with is we used the VizDorm platform, you know, reinforcement learning, and we built a five-layer uh, ne neural network. And you can see this. What we're grabbing is four frames in time sequence from a game of Doom, pushing that into three layers of convolutional uh, networks to actually look at the features in the map and understand what's there. 
And then two final dense layers that are, in one case, making decisions to turn left, turn right, and shoot. And we built another version of the game where we actually added you know, eight actions, which is motion around, um, also along with the, you know, the run and gun <laughs> game of Doom. So the reward, what we do is, with reinforcement learning, is the, the NDP 200 knows nothing about the game structure at all. It just gets rewarded through playing thousands upon thousands of games. And you know, essentially, this network, 600K parameters, fits on the device, 35 frames a second at one milliwatt. So now, running VizDoom, what we're doing is, I couldn't get Doom ported to our device to actually run the game, so we're hosting that on a Linux box. We're running a game. We're sending that down through our dev board directly to the NDP 200 to run inference on those frames and actually make the decisions at the frame rate that we need to. Um, so we go through, what's the, what's the benefit of this? Well, the brain is roughly a 15-watt process. So now I've taken a 15-watt process and I've turned it into one millimot at the edge. And so I've got the, you know, the record here of 15,000x improvement with the NDP 200 playing Doom. Now, my guess is it's probably faster than I am. The reaction time's better. And at this point, I think it's even more you know, stacked in the NDP 200's favor. So what I want to show you a couple uh, you know, videos of games that we've actually played. And I'll point out a couple things. It's really fascinating to me. So we let this thing go and play with no knowledge of the game mechanics. Let the, let the 200 you know, neural network learn the game. It naively goes around and just starts randomly turning and shooting. And at some point, it hits a monster, and it gets a reward. And it starts going, hey, that's a good thing. So in the early epochs of training, it's like, hey, just unload the gun wherever, and I find somebody. But it quickly finds out you can't go further that way. So it's learned to actually shoot, conserve ammo, keep spinning around and looking for monsters. And what it turns out is, even with a network that's not that big, it's a surprisingly sophisticated outcome. And so let's take a look at this video, and you'll see, you'll see what I'm talking about. So it only loses now when it runs out of ammo. So it's maximized its you know, attempt to uh, play that game. Oh, So this second video, this actually we played it another game that actually added motion. And the idea behind this is not only do you have to figure out where to turn around, but you actually have to you know, run and gun and shoot through this. And we turned up the difficulty, and it forces the, neural, you know, the, the inference to actually stop attack every monster before it proceeds to the end goal, which is getting to the end. And let me try if I can restart that. If you look at the top right corner, you'll see the grayscale, what the NDP 200 is seeing in the image frame there. So, I mean, again, we're blown away. It's super fun. How is this useful for the real world? Well, I don't know. That's what I'm asking you guys help for. Um, you know, we, we do think of this. How do you observe and act on the world? We've definitely seen, you know, with portals that are turning to find the users in the room, there's drones that actually have to do things, and actually putting machine learning into that control loop is going to get all the benefits you've seen in classification now. We're going to see that in the ability to build complicated systems at the edge, you know, with very, very, very low power usage. Good. So I made up most of the time. Basically, what you can see is NDP 200 is ready for computer vision. We see the applications under a milliwatt running a lot of the networks that you're going to need for vision at the edge. We have the development platform that's going to ease the use to get right into this. Go collect data. Go pull the power supply pin and measure the power supply on our device. I mean, we always get this question when we present you know, Sentient's solution to customers. Like, ah, do you, I don't believe your power numbers. Well, here you go. Take the dev board. Go measure it for yourself. You know, trust but verify. And what people always come back, yeah, yeah, that's what you said is actually what's happening on the device. And then finally, the fun part of this, it's more than just object detection. Think of computer vision at the edge as more of a way to interact with the world. So we can actually use these ideas to build more than just finding a person or a box in a frame, but act, control, and be more like the machine learning natural interface. So we see, hear, and feel the world 
we use machine learning to do it better than anybody else. Again, thank you so much. Uh, I guess we'll open it up for questions now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dave. Yeah, this is pretty cool. It's the equivalent, I guess, of teaching a spider to play uh, Doom better than human. Right, right. <laughs> Uh, and again, any questions? I played Doom when I was in uh, undergraduate when it just came out, and I should have been studying for my exams, and my friends and I were playing network Doom yeah. you know, in the computer stack, so I guess that I have a Now nostalgia. we see the results, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that uh, board that, uh, that uh, Raspberry Pi board? Yes. Can I get it at DigiKey or something, or only from, from you? It, it comes through us. So we build a daughter card that snaps on a standard Raspberry Pi. So you know, engage with us, we'll get you the, the software licensing kit, and it gets you the whole environment to interact with that, you know, that board and that environment. There's, you know, standard Pi allows you to you know, quickly see our solution and envision how you can modify that for your platform. Uh, yeah, uh, quick question. Can you do audio with you at the same time on your 200? Yes, that's right. There is an audio pipeline there. Mm -hmm. What you needed to do is think of the param space. So param space is available. The sensor fusion is fascinating to us. Like that's where it gets interesting. And you think back to the dev board, even that has um, accelerometer gyro and it's got an eight by eight thermal. So if you had grayscale image plus a heat map, the joint network that learns those characteristics can do a lot for person detection with is, you know, correlating more than one sensor. So ready to go, as long as you can fit all the params, you're ready to go. Hi, uh, here's a quick question. So is there any limitation on the type of um, neural networks that the, the chip can support? Yeah. So is there any limitations on that? So what type of neural networks that the chip can support? So we're trying to cover 99% of what you're gonna need and at any point, if there's an activation or some type of function, you know, we're able to use the DSP to assist that. So we get almost everything you need for computer vision, for advanced modeling, you know, RNNs, CNNs, time series data, you know, all the things from th those types of uh, networks. And then whatever doesn't fit, the DSP can assist. And so effectively, there's no limitation on this device. Uh, for example, what about transformers? Yeah, so transformer, you can do that. I mean, it's essentially, you know, part of that is the softmax activation, there's attention layers and things, those are supported. And it takes a little bit to the DSP to assist, but, you know, we essentially have those solutions. Um, thank you, Vanessa's presentation. Just one quick question. The one millivolt power consumption, uh, is it 100% active time or is it duty cycled? So that is, that's the 100% that's the over, it's not 100% activity. Okay. It's with the frame rates, it's duty cycled. So we try and go into activations and then go to sleep and then keep the frame rate up that we want to go after. All right, thanks a lot. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Dave. Yeah. Okay, Great thanks. presentation. And we are very thankful for, for our sponsors. Uh, the executive, the premier sponsor this year is, is Edge Impulse. Uh, uh, and then uh, uh, executive sponsors are ARM, DeepLight, uh, uh, Qualcomm, and Sintian. Uh, Platinum sponsor analog devices, uh, Brainchip, Infineon, ClickerTech, Latent AI, NXP, uh, Reality AI, Renaissance, Sony Semiconductor, and Synaptics. Really very diverse company, gr great companies uh, who are really driving uh, tiny ML forward. Uh, and um, uh, gold sponsors, PhotoHub, MicroAI, Prophecy, Seed Studio, SenseML, uh, ST Microelectronics, uh, Synsense, XMOS. And we have a list of uh, civil sponsors, Avion Devices, Aspinity, Siva, Emza, uh, Greenwave Technologies, Gravity, Hymix, HOTG, Imagimob, um, Itemis, uh, Lattice, Nota, uh, OmniML, PixArt, Plumerai, Kixo, uh, Rackner, Rickson, SAP, Stream Analyze, Texel, and Google. So we are very uh, thankful for their support and more importantly for them being part of this community and driving it forward.